Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God has awakened us to another new day of life. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We begin our morning prayer on page 34 of our Books of Common Prayer with our opening sentence for Eastertide. And we continue on page 35 and following. Let me serve you, let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We pray together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilate, O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth, Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His love and mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now we have this opportunity to make ourselves right with God, to bring before God those things of which our consciences are afraid, and to ask for God's forgiveness. So we take a moment of silence as we reflect on the ways in which we have offended against God and man. We pray together. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we come to our psalm appointed for this morning, and our psalm is Psalm 106, and we are going to recite together the first part, verses 1 to 18. Hallelujah! Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord? or show forth all his praise. Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. 
Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people, and visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your elect and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned as our forebears did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. In Egypt, they did not consider your marvelous works, nor remember the abundance of your love. They defied the Most High at the Red Sea. But he saved them for his name's sake, to make his power known. He rebuked the Red Sea and it dried up, and he led them through the deep as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of those who hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. The waters covered their oppressors. Not one of them was left. Then they believed his words and sang him songs of praise. But they soon forgot his deeds and did not wait for his counsel. A craving seized them in the wilderness and they put God to the test in the desert. He gave them what they asked, but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses in the camp, and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed Dathan, and covered the company of Abiram. Fire blazed up against their company, and flames devoured the wicked. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now we are going to have our first reading, and our first reading is from the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, and we are reading verses 1 to 22. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, and say to them, These are the appointed festivals of the Lord that you shall proclaim as holy convocations, my appointed festivals. For six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of complete rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord, throughout your settlements. These are the appointed festivals of the Lord, the holy convocations, which you shall celebrate at the time appointed for them. In the first month of the fourteenth day of the month, at twilight, there, sh there shall be a Passover offering to the Lord. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the festival of unleavened bread to the Lord. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall not work at your occupations. For seven days you shall present the Lord's offering by fire. On the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation. You shall not work at your occupations. The Lord spoke to Moses. Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, when you enter the land that I am giving you, and you reap its harvest, you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. He shall raise the sheaf before the Lord, so that you may find acceptance. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall raise it. On the day when you raise the sheaf, you shall offer a lamb a year old, without blemish, as a burnt offering to the Lord. And the grain offering with it shall be two-tenths of an ephah of choice flour mixed with oil, an offering by fire of pleasing odor to the Lord, and drink offering with it shall be of wine, one-fourth of a hin. You shall eat no bread or parched grain or fresh airs until that very day, until you have brought the offering of your God. It is a statute forever throughout your generations in all your settlements. And from the day after the Sabbath, from the day on which you bring the sheaf of the elevation offering, 
you shall count off seven weeks. They shall be complete. You shall count until the day after the seventh Sabbath, fifty days. Then you shall present an offering of new grain to the Lord. You shall bring from your settlements two loaves of bread as an elevation offering, each made of two, two tenths of an ephah. They shall be of choice flour baked with leaven as first fruits to the Lord. You shall present with the bread seven lambs a year old without blemish, one young bull and two rams. They shall be a burnt offering to the Lord, along with their grain offering and their drink offerings, an offering by fire of pleasing odor to the Lord. You shall also offer one male goat for a sin offering, and two male lambs a year old as a sacrifice of well-being. The priests shall raise them with the bread of the first fruits as an elevation offering before the Lord, together with the two lambs. They shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. On that same day, you shall make proclamation. You shall hold a holy convocation. You shall not work at your occupations. This is a statute forever in all your settlements throughout your generations. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the greenings of your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the alien. I am the Lord, your God. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. And we continue with the canticle on page 56, God's plan of salvation. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with all the spiritual blessings of heaven. God chose us in Christ before the world was made, to be holy and blameless, and to live by his love in his presence. God planned through Jesus Christ to bring us to himself as his children, that we might praise the glory of his grace, his free gift to us in the Beloved. In Christ we gain redemption. Through his blood, our sins are forgiven. Now we come to our second reading. And our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. We read in chapter 7, verses 1 to 12. Matthew 7, verses 1 to 12. Jesus continued, do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye, while the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. This 
is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. Let us now reflect on this passage we just read from Matthew chapter 7, and we read from verses 1 to 12. Jesus is continuing with the Sermon on the Mount and is in fact coming towards the end of that great um, teaching. And Jesus is teaching about, in this passage, about how we should relate to one another as God's people and to our God. And the first thing he talks about is that tendency all of us have as human beings to look at others and to judge. You know, judgment is not for us. Yes, we can see the faults of others, you know, but the, the, that business of judging is, is judgment is for God, it's not for us. And indeed, Jesus is pointing us to the fact that we really ought to look at ourselves first before we, we even look at others to see their faults. You know, so the same high standards which we, which we apply to others in, 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 in judging them, we need to apply to ourselves. And if we do that, of course, we will acknowledge our own uh, departure from the way that we should go, from our own sinfulness. It will lead us to acknowledge our own need for forgiveness, as much as we see that need in others. Our own need for God's saving grace. And it will help us, if we look at ourselves first, with those same high standards, which are really God's standards, we will see the need for forgiveness and to see God's saving grace. So as we see the, the, the faults in others, though, our attitude is, as I said, we cannot judge. God, judgment is for God. But we could seek to encourage persons, you know, as they have, when we see their weaknesses, our approach should be as fellow travelers, fellow children of God, none better than the other. We, 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 there's a rule for us to help one another. Yes, there's a rule for us to help one another as we journey together. We are fellow travelers on that road that is ought to be leading us to, to God. So we should be ready to encourage others, not to condemn, not to judge. And always mindful that we are really no better than the other person. And we too are in need of God's, we have sinned, and we too are in need, in need of God's forgiveness. So, there is a danger, you know, as we focus, you know, the public, the public issue is, as a, is a danger. If we focus on other people, we will not be able to see ourselves. And we always want to be in a, that situation where we are able to, to, as it were, recognize our own faults, our own weaknesses, and not so focus on others that we begin to feel that we are okay, and others are in difficulty in terms of the relationship with God. We might be the ones who have difficulty and problems in our relationship with God. We are the ones who are in danger of losing, you know, our souls. So, basically, Yes, Jesus says we shouldn't judge. We are no better than anybody else, you know. And as we use those high standards to judge others, we will be judged by those same high standards. And, of course, we too will fail. So humility and acknowledgement that we too are sinners, that we too are, ought to make ourselves right with God, that is our concern. When we see the weaknesses in others, our, our duty, if you want, you know, what is to encourage and, and help as we hope that others will encourage and help us in our own weaknesses to find the way that we ought to go. And Jesus continues to talk about what in my Bible is headed, do not, headed profaning the holy. So, of course, God is holy and God is utterly other, apart from anything you know, human, God is very, very much a part. God is God. God is worthy of our awe, our worship, the best of ourselves that we can offer. Sharing God's, the love of God with others is 
you know, akin to, you know, giving a very expensive gift, you know, very valuable gift to someone. And if that person, we offer a valuable gift to, very expensive gift, one that we have put so much thought and money into, if that person simply rejects, you know, that gift, you know, and over and over rejects it, what is going to be our approach? Of course, we will reach the point where we we realize we can't do anything. We've tried our best. You know, we are seeking to please this person, you know, somebody we consider, and they simply are not interested. And so similarly, Jesus is saying, do not cast pearls to swine, or they will trample them on their on the foot and turn and maul you. So yes, we are to reach out to others, fellow travelers, those who may need to hear the word of God, which is akin to the to, to the pearl here, and what Jesus is saying. Yes, it will make all the difference in their lives and enhance their lives to, 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 to come to know God. And we might be the means of bringing that treasure, really, the treasure of the word to persons. But of course, Jesus is saying there's a limit to this, you know, how far we go when people simply do not appreciate that the pearl, the word of God, which will transform their lives in the here and in the hereafter. So in those cases, we simply have to reach a point where we realize that we can't go any further. There might be a future time that we could come back as it were, but we can only go so far when it's when the very word of God is being rejected. And Jesus continues with his teaching from verses 7 to 11, ask, search and knock is the heading in my Bible. So yes, we are to seek God. All of us, it's what our life is all about, to seek God, to grow in an ever-deepening relationship with this God who made us for himself. He knows our needs, as we say, even before we ask, and our ignorance in asking. And God is always concerned, of course, in providing what is best for us. You know, we, we, we Jesus is exhorting us. Yes, we, we must ask for those things that we, we, we want, those things we need, we must ask. He says, it, it will be given to us, search, and, and, and we will find, knock, and the door will be opened. So yes, as we deepen that relationship with God, we will, more and more ask those things that are really appropriate, the things that we really need in this life. But of course, we must ask in faith, believing that God will provide. Of course, God knows best. God, God knows best. And God will, always answer, God will always answer our prayers in ways that are best for us. But we on our part will ask and we we trust God to answer our prayers in, in the time that is, that is appropriate, in the way that is appropriate, in a way that, of course, that is best for us. So we, our Heavenly Father, expects us to ask, Jesus is saying, and we should ask for what we need. And not only when we ask, not only for our own personal selves, but we, we ask for others as well. Because we, 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 are, we are not God's only children. We have to care for, for God's people as well. And so when we ask, we ask for ourselves. And we ask for the God as well on behalf of others. So we are always concerned in this journey to, that we are part of God's people. We are all one in God. And we are concerned. We must always express that concern. That selfishness, there's no place for that selfishness in among God's people. We only, there's no room for us to think only of ourselves. We think of the needs of others as well. And we seek you know, what we have, what God has given us to, in various ways, material or spiritual or, or in other ways, you know, we seek to help others with what we are able to provide, and we ask God as well to look after them. And of course, we come to the last portion, verse 13, the 
the golden rule in everything do to others as you will have them do to you for this is the law and the prophets so our relationships you know as fellow creatures of God our Father, right? We, uh, those relationships are to build up one another, to strengthen one another, to support one another as we journey together in a relationship with God. We are indeed God's children. It's something that we really have to come to appreciate. We are brothers and sisters as children of God. So, if we have any, any doubt about how we should treat one another, on any matter, or in any situation, Jesus is suggesting to us that what we should do is think about ourselves, how we would like others to deal with us in that similar situation, how we like others to respond to us, do unto others as you would have them do to you. So if we always think that way, when we act towards others, we act towards them just as we would like them to act towards us in a particular situation. As we put, in a, as we put ourselves in their place, as it were, that's what we are doing. We will, you know, appreciate, you know, the, the way that we should respond to others. And that that rule Jesus says that covers all that the law says and all the prophets have taught. It covers it all. Just think about it. And, and perhaps, you know, we, we really do not, you know, daily encounters in our daily lives and situations, that should be foremost, you know, in our interactions. As we, when somebody does something and we respond, you know, are we responding with that in mind in the back of our heads? Are we thinking, how would I like somebody to respond to me in that situation. And that response is not necessarily a verbal response, it's a, verb, it's a response in terms of, yes, what we say, but also what we do and how we do it. It's always considering that other person's needs because we are now thinking of them as ourselves. How would we like them to respond? And we seek to respond in that way. Jesus' own words that we should do unto others as we would like them to do to us in the similar circumstances. And since we always want the best for ourselves, it's really about doing the best for others. And in a, you know, and that you know, translates, you might say, to the law of love. Love one another. That, that's, what it, that's what it really translates to eventually. So these, Jesus has given us these words of advice as to how we live uh, we ought to live with one another. We do not judge. Judgment is for God. We are to, to support one another. Right, right. Even in spreading God's word, the pearl, that very valuable word that will change lives, valued, as valuable as it is, there are limits to which we can go if others are just refusing. For what we want, we must ask. God will be able to determine we must ask, we must ask wordily, as James reminds us, you know, sometimes when our prayers are not being answered because we are not asking for the right reasons or in the right way. You know, we ask unworthily. So yes, we must ask, yes, for what we want, and God, who knows what, who knows it all, will answer in a way that's best for us. And we make sure that what we ask for is really what we really need, what, what, what is best for us. And when we ask unworthily, we, God, of course, will not be able to answer our prayers. And the golden rule, to do unto others as we have them do to us. May we always remember, keep it, keep it ever in mind, we do forget. In you know, our relationship with one another, let us you know, follow this principle that Jesus himself gave us. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. The Lord be with you.
Apostles' Creed on page 42 of our Books of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we turn to our collect. We turn to page 170 for the collect for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue in prayer as we thank God for the gift of another new day of life. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us to its close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good work we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit that we may seek in everything to know your will knowing it, may gladly perform it to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we reach in forth our hands in love, we bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And we continue to pray for God's world, for God's people everywhere, and for people in all kinds of need. Today, Lord, we lift up all those people living in those countries where there is death and destruction, there is war and fighting, where there may be natural disasters, where people are suffering from oppressive regimes, where conditions, Lord, for life is harsh and tough and life is at risk. We pray for people living up under those conditions on a daily basis. We pray for strength and courage, Lord. May they experience your very presence. For your people among, in the midst of those situations, may they be sources of your power, your love, your peace, your courage. We continue to pray for your church worldwide. For all who are ministers in your church, Lord, we lift them up this morning. We pray for your guidance and inspiration. May their Lord always be empowered to 
respond to the needs around them, to bring your love known, to cast light in areas of darkness, to bring help and hope to those in need. We pray for the Anglican Communion worldwide, for all the primates and all the provinces of our Anglican Communion. We pray especially for the most Reverend Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury. May your blessings continue to be with him and we pray as well for all those differences that exist among us in our communion. We pray that you touch hearts and minds, Lord, and lead us on the path of of right and of tolerance and grace and love. We pray for our church in the province of the West Indies, for Archbishop Howard, who is also Bishop of Jamaica, for all the bishops of the dioceses in our province, may your hand of guidance and blessing be upon them as they lead their people in their individual dioceses. We pray for Claude, our own bishop, the Bishop of Trinidad and Tobago, Bless him, bless his family, inspire him in the work that he's doing as he leads the church in this place. We lift up all our clergy in the various um, parishes of our diocese. May your hand be upon them to strengthen them, to lead them, so that they may lead your people in the various parishes, Lord, in the way that we ought to go to make you known, to fulfill that mission that we have as your people in this place that you put us. We lift up our country of Trinidad and Tobago, our leaders, our president, our prime minister, members of parliament, ministers of government, all those in positions of decision-making and authority that affect the lives of our people. Inspire them, fill their hearts with that desire to do what is good and right for everyone. Pray for the situation, the crime situation in our country, and we pray you touch hearts and minds of our people. Help us to think, Lord, in the way that you want us to think. To reach out to others, to think about helping others, doing what is good and right for them. Remove that desire of some of us, Lord, to bring hurt and harm to others. Pray for the families of our nation, the homes in which our people live. May those homes be places of your presence and your blessing. Bless parents as they relate to their children. Bless their children. Bless the, their children as they relate to their parents. We pray in that environment our young people will be nurtured, Lord, into the persons you made them to be. We pray for all those who influence our children school teachers, primary, secondary schools, and other institutions, tertiary level institutions. For those who work with our children in the community, perhaps in clubs and sporting organizations, may all those who work with our children, Lord, be inspired in their work. Give them the wisdom to be able to nurture the children in the way that they ought to grow. We continue to pray for those who are in need today, Lord, those who have lost loved ones and are in mourning at this time. Bring your healing and consolation. For those who are sick and suffering and are crying out for healing, may your hand of power be upon them. May they receive, Lord, your grace and consolation. For senior citizens who need our help at this time as they they, they are advanced in age, no longer have the same powers. We pray that we, our eyes will be open and we will be willing to help. For those in all kinds of need this morning, Lord, open our eyes and make us see. Make us mindful of the needs around us and touch our hearts that we might be willing to respond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue with the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.